Welcome back. This is the 8th video in the statistical process control series. In the last video, we understood the different parts of control chart which includes X bar chart that represents the location or accuracy of the process and range chart that represents the spread or precisions of the process. And both of these charts has a center line around which we plot the sample data and upper and lower control limits that tells us how far we can expect the sample value from the center line considering the variation due to common causes only. Any data beyond these control limits indicate the presence of a special cause. Then we have subgroups to maintain the sequence in which the data is collected which helps us to identify when a special cause has occurred. And finally, event log, information that include any potential source of variation during each sampling, which can be used to find the origin of the special cause. In this video, we will learn to calculate the center line and the control limits. The problem is, in order to calculate control limits, we need some data. And in order to plot some data, we need control limits. Hmm. So, to start with, we initially take plus minus 3 sigma as control limits. With the assumption that the process is in statistical control and is set exactly at the target value, that is innocent until proven guilty. We take 25 data sets of 5 sample size each for the test of stability. If any of those 125 data points lie beyond plus minus 3 sigma, there is a reason to believe that spatial cause is present. We must eliminate it before proceeding any further. Once the process is in control, we will move to calculate the center line and control limits. As we know, subgroup average of these five samples is known as X bar and the difference between the max and minimum value of these five samples in a subgroup is called range R. Now, we calculate grand average x double bar by dividing the sum of these x bars with number of subgroups k, that is 25. And similarly, we calculate the average range r bar by dividing the sum of these individual range with 25. This x double bar act as a center line for average chart and r bar for the range chart. Further, to calculate the control limits, we use table of constants, where we have some predetermined values based on the subgroup size to simplify our calculation. So, we need A2, a control limit factor for averages, and D3 and D4, control limits factors for range. For X bar chart, Upper control limit can be calculated as X double bar plus A to R bar and lower control limit can be calculated as X double bar minus A to R bar. Similarly, for range chart, upper control limit can be calculated as D4 R bar and lower control limit can be calculated as D3 R bar. Simple. With these control limits, we begin to plot X bar and range. And if any point goes beyond control limit, the occurrence of spatial cause is likely. In addition to this, there are few more rules which points out the presence of a spatial cause. Number one is beyond limit. We have seen that. Second is drift. Seven points in a row on the same side of the center line. Then we have trend. Six points in a row trending up or down. Fourth is over control. 14 points in a row alternating up and down. Now if we divide the area between control limits in three equal zones, then the next is zone A. Two out of three consecutive points in zone A on the same side. Sixth is zone B. Four out of five consecutive points in zone B or beyond on the same side. Seventh is stratification 15 points in a row within zone C and finally mixture 
8 points in a row with no points in zone C. But these out of control signals do not require the recalculation of control limits. Meaning, if any of these signals is observed, just find and eliminate the cause and continue plotting the data with same control limits. Control limits are to be recalculated only when you have made any fundamental improvement in the process, thereby changing the process capability. Also, there are high chances that the centerline of X bar chart does not coincide with the target value. It is perfectly okay. Now there is one thing that you might have noticed. These control limits only represents what a process can do. But we are more interested in what we want the process to do. That is to produce parts with customer specified value. So we plot two more lines that is upper specification limit and the lower specification limit. Now if these lines are within control limits, our process is producing defects. If these lines are on the control limits, we are still producing defects. Because in X bar chart, we are plotting averages. That means individual values will be both above and below the average value. If specification limits coincides with the plus minus 3 sigma of the process, we can be sure that 99.7% of the parts will be okay, but in the long run, these percentage will drop to 93.3, remember? The ideal situation will be to have the specification limits well outside of the plus minus 3 sigma of the process. Because in this case, even if the process gets a little shifted over time, it has the probability to keep on producing OK parts by the time we detect this shift using control charts. Can you see now why we can never use specification limits as the control limits? Hmm. Before ending this video, let me quickly tell you that there are basically two types of control charts. If the data is of continuous nature, that is diameter, length, flatness, we use variable type of charts like the X bar R chart. And if the data is of discrete nature, that is go, no go, pass, fail, we use attribute types of control charts. We will study a little more about them in the next video. See you there.